Hello students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know and understand the conceptual basis of existentialism, identify the uses of existentialism in various domains of life, learn about the importance of existentialism with regard to other schools of thoughts. Existentialism forms a vital part of intellectual history just as rationalism and introspectionism. Adopted as a self-description by Jean-Paul Sartre, it was through the wide dissemination of post-war literary and philosophical output by Sartre and his associates such as Albert Camus and Simone de Beauvoir that existentialism became identified with a cultural movement that flourished in Europe in the 1940s and 1950s. The 19th century philosophers Soren Kierkegaard and Friedrich Nietzsche came to be seen as precursors of the movement. Existentialism was as much a literary phenomenon as a philosophical one. Existentialism may be defined as the philosophical theory which holds that a further set of categories governed by the norm of authenticity is necessary to grasp human existence. Existentialism does not deny the validity of the basic categories of physics, biology, psychology and the other sciences, categories such as matter, causality, force, function, organism, development, motivation and so on. Instead, it claims only that the human beings cannot be fully understood in terms of them. Nor can such an understanding be gained by supplementing our scientific picture with a moral one. Generally considered as the father of existentialism, Kierkegaard came up with the concept of single individual, according to which the singularity of existence comes to light at the moment of conflict between ethics and religious faith. Similarly, philosophers like Nietzsche, Sartre and Heidegger came up with their own understandings and concepts thus expanding the boundaries of philosophy. But while it is true that the major existential philosophers wrote with a passion and urgency rather than uncommon in our own time, and while the idea that philosophy cannot be practiced in the disinterested manner of an objective science is indeed central to existentialism. It is equally true that all the themes popularly associated with existentialism such as dread, boredom, alienation, the absurd, freedom, commitment, nothingness, nihilism and so on find their philosophical significance in the context of the search for a new categorical framework together with its governing norm. As a cultural movement, even though belonging to the past, existentialism has continued to play an important role in contemporary thought in both the continental and analytical traditions. The scholarly nature and more systematic focus that derives from classical existentialism often comes into confrontation with more recent movements such as structuralism, deconstruction, hermeneutics and feminism. Also, portrayal of the narrative conceptions of existentialism through media, writings of philosophers and other sources develops an influential criticism on the existentialist idea, thus indicating a calling for a new existentialism. Fundamentals of Existentialism There are mainly seven primary building blocks of existentialism. They are as follows. The first is existence. Existentialism takes its name from the philosophical theme of existence. To be specific, it talks about human existence and not just any existence. This primary point being rooted in Plato's distinction between matter and soul or Descartes between extended and thinking things was countered by the existentialists with a model that resembles more of the Aristotelian. The latter idea arrived at the practicality of existence with German idealists 
particularly Kant and thus the notion that human existence is action came into limelight. For many existentialists, authentic existence involves a certain tension to be recognized and lived through but not resolved. The boundaries of the primary function further expanded in the 19th and 20th centuries with the distinctive method approach for human sciences like psychology, sociology or economics which proposes that the free situated human being is not an object of knowledge in the sense that humans always exist as the possibility of transcending any knowledge of it. Anxiety and Authenticity In existentialism, anxiety or anguish is the recognition of the fact that human existence is on its own. It has two key implications. Firstly, that many existentialists tended to stress the significance of emotions or feelings as found in Kierkegaard's and Heidegger's discussion of mood. Secondly, anxiety is often referred to as being on its own. This notion differs amongst the philosophers. Authenticity, a concept related to anxiety, refers to the good life in Greek notion. Authentic existence involves the idea that one has to create oneself and then live in accordance with the self. The authentic act is one that is in accordance with one's freedom. The notion of authenticity is sometimes seen as connected to individualism that involves some kind of value in celebrating and sustaining one's difference and independence from others. Freedom Freedom is in part defined by the isolation of one's decisions from any determination by a deity or by previously existent values of knowledge. Usefully, linked with the concepts of dread and anguish, the archetypal example of this is the experience one has when standing on a cliff where one not only fears falling off it, but also dreads the possibility of throwing oneself off. In this experience, that nothing is holding me back, one senses the lack of anything that predetermines one to either throw oneself off or to stand still, and one experiences one's own freedom. Many of the existentialists take on a broadly Kantian notion of freedom, freedom as autonomy. This means that freedom, rather than being randomness or arbitrariness, consists in the binding of oneself to a law, but a law that is given by the self in recognition of its responsibilities. Situatedness Freedom is made more meaningful when one's body and its characteristics, his circumstances in a historical world and past, all weigh upon freedom. Situatedness is related to the view that one should have an idea about what possibilities are open to him and what choices need to be made here and now. Many existentialists such as Nietzsche, Schiller consider the view that each of one's acts says something about how he views the others but reciprocally each of their acts is a view about what he is thus one's freedom is always situated with respect to the judgments of others. Irrationality the notion of the irrationality contains the idea that there is no meaning in the world beyond what meaning we give it. This meaninglessness also encompasses the amorality or unfairness of the world. Human existence might be described as irrational or absurd in one of the following senses. Firstly, that nature as a whole has no design, no reason for existing. A second meaning of the absurd is this. My freedom will not only be undetermined by knowledge or reason, but from the point of view of the latter, my freedom will even appear absurd. Because of the world's absurdity, at any point in time, anything can happen to anyone and a tragic event could lead someone into direct confrontation with the absurd. 
The notion of the irrationality has also been prominent in literature throughout the history. Crowd Existentialism generally also carries a social or political dimension which involves the concept of being and particularly the authentic being of others. The social and political aspect of authentic commitment is much clearer in Sartre, de Boer and Camus. In its basic phenomenological sense, it constitutes the world as objective and oneself as objectively existing subjectivity. One experiences oneself as seen in the other's look is precisely the same way that one experiences the other as seen by him as subjectivity. This is so because the look tends to objectify what it sees. When one experiences oneself in the look, one doesn't experience oneself as nothing, but as something. Another characteristic feature of the look is that no other really needs to have been there. It is quite possible that the creaking floorboard was nothing but the movement of an old house. It is only one's perception of the way another might perceive him. Philosophy as a way of life. In existentialism, philosophy must be thought of as fully integrated within life. Historically, two antecedents are identified with this notion. Firstly, Greek figures, especially Socrates, who was not only non-professional but in his pursuit of the good life, he tended to avoid the formation of a system or theory and his teachings took place often in public spaces. The second influence was of German idealist Kant in the 18th century. Later in the 19th century, Marx famously criticized previous philosophy by saying that the point of philosophy is not to know things, even to know things about activity, but to change them. The concept of philosophy as a way of life manifests itself in existentialist thought in a number of ways. For Kierkegaard, for example, the fundamental truths of my existence are not representations such as ideas, propositions or symbols, the meaning of which can be separated from their origin. Rather, the truths of existence are immediately lived, felt and acted. Key Existentialist Philosophers since the time of its introduction, many philosophers have given their inputs to existentialism by presenting new thoughts into lifelight. Some of them are as follows. Soren Kierkegaard Danish philosopher Kierkegaard's work takes place against the background of an academician dominated by Hegelian dialectics and a society which reduces the communication with the divine to the everyday observance of the ritualistic side of an institutionalized Christianity. For Kierkegaard, the truth of Christianity signifies the very paradoxicality of faith, that is, that it is possible for the individual to go beyond the ethical and because of this very act of disobedience to be loved by God. In the most famous work of Kierkegaard, Fear and Trembling, a short book which exhibits Many of the issues raised by him throughout his career narrates the story of the attempted sacrifice of Isaac by his father Abraham. While scientists could learn about the world by observation, Kierkegaard emphatically denied that observation could reveal the inner workings of the spiritual world. Friedrich Nietzsche German philosopher Nietzsche's key ideas included Apollinian or Dionysian dichotomy, nihilism, death of God, and criticizing free will. Nietzsche claimed that the death of God would eventually lead to the loss of any universal perspective on things and along with it, any coherent sense of objective truth. For Nietzsche, the crisis of meaning is inextricably linked to the crisis of religious consciousness in the West. Another concept important to an understanding of Nietzsche's thought is of the value creating Ubermensch, translated variously as Overman, Superman or Superhuman. 
Friedrich Nietzsche held a pessimistic view on modern society and culture. His views stand against the concept of popular culture. He believed the press and mass culture led to conformity and brought about mediocrity. Martin Heidegger German philosopher Heidegger's philosophy revolves largely around being and time. Heidegger thought that the presence of things for us is not their being but merely their interpretation as equipment according to a particular system of meaning and purpose. Heidegger's later works beginning by 1930 came to be known as the turn. One way this has been understood is as a shift from doing to dwelling and from being and time to time and being. Largely influenced by the Aristotle, Greeks Kierkegaard, Husserl, etc., Heidegger's philosophy also seems to influence Iron Shia Islamists. John Paul Sartre. Sartre's primary idea is that people as humans are condemned to be free. In Sartre's interpretation of this idea, consciousness is not to be identified with a thing such as mind, soul or brain, that is to say, some kind of a repository of ideas and images of things. Rather, consciousness is nothing but directedness towards things. Sartre wrote successfully in a number of literary modes and made major contributions to literary criticism and literary biography. Sartre in his book, Notebook, proposes two new ideas. First, that cooperation presupposes one's freedom and others' judgments about one must concern him. Second, that there is the possibility of a form of social organization and action in which each individual freely gives him or herself over to a joint project. Simone de Beauvoir French philosopher Beauvoir, through her philosophical essays, explored existentialism. Beauvoir believed that existence precedes a sense. Hence, one is not born a woman but becomes one. She offers a picture of the human subject as constantly oscillating between facticity and transcendence. According to her, we are ambiguous beings destined to throw ourselves into the future while simultaneously it is our very own existence that throws us back into facticity. Through her exemplary texts such as The Second Sex, Beauvoir argued that there was a limited attitude towards women's success by maintaining the perception that there were a deviation from the normal and were always outsiders attempting to emulate normality. Albert Camus French intellectual and writer Camus was interested more in how one must behave and more precisely how to behave when one does not believe in God or reason. Camus is known for his conception of the absurd, which signifies the space that opens up between man's need for intelligibility and the unreasonable silence of the world. Camus addressed one of the fundamental questions of existentialism, which is the problem of suicide. In the myth of Sisyphus, Camus seeks to identify the kinds of life that could be worth living despite their inherent meaninglessness. During 1957, Camus deviated from Sartre by opposing to totalitarianism. Models of existentialism. Humanistic existential model. Existential humanistic psychology through the development of higher self-esteem in an individual helps to make social contributions to the community and society that they live in. In the 1950s, several well-known psychologists such as Maslow, Rogers and May challenged the idea that all behavior could be explained and treated using the old models. The birth of humanistic and existential psychology came about that time. Humanistic psychology emphasizes self-acceptance, personal values, personal meaning and individual choice, whereas existential psychology emphasizes self-determination, choice, 
and individual responsibility. The new model combined the two and was named the humanistic existential model. Both humanistic and existential theories place emphasis on the importance of individual choice. The greatest strength of this model is its consideration that freedom of choice empowers individuals. When a client feels empowered, that person becomes invested in his or her treatment. According to humanistic existentialists, the client is someone who is in continuous search of personal fulfillment. Phenomenology is the most important core belief of existential humanistic psychology and psychotherapy. Today, many studies have confirmed the validity of humanistic psychotherapy and reinforced its position in treating the individual. However, research is more limited concerning the existential part of the humanistic psychotherapy, but the tenets of existential psychology is present in the emerging bodies of psychotherapy models. The seventh seal, Bergman's cinematic model of existentialism. Through the making of the seventh seal in 1957, Swedish filmmaker Ingmar Bergman foundationalizes a singular expression of his own ponderings on the nature of faith, mortality, and love. The profound film employs ideas and visuals so iconographic and transcending that they rise above the limitations of the medium. The silence referred to in Revelations and explored throughout Bergman's existential film. The seventh seal is the silence of God. The seventh seal is a reminder that faith and fear, especially a fear of death, while not tangible in any sense, are still driving forces in our life. Through the cinematic model of existentialism, one is constantly challenged to ask himself if indeed either God or the devil exist, or is, is it just the death who exists? Bergman's film resonates with striking singularity, his scenes perfectly described to build a thesis saturated to every last detail in search of meaning. The seventh seal poses questions and many more as it challenges one to consider his own ideas of death as well as his own faith or lack thereof in a truly haunting and grim way. The only thing one does come to know through this model is that death will come for everyone and that even the best of one or the most cunning cannot escape it. Life is the game and death is the end result is all this model comes down to. Criticisms of Existentialism Herbert Marcus has criticized existentialism, especially Sartre's being and nothingness for projecting some features of living in a modern oppressive society, features such as anxiety and meaninglessness, onto the nature of existence itself. Roger Scruton has claimed that both Heidegger's concept of inauthenticity and Sartre's concept of bad faith are both self-inconsistent in that they deny any universal moral creed, yet speak of these concepts as if everyone is bound to abide by them. Christian critiques complained that existentialism portrays humanity in the worst possible light, overlooking the dignity and grace that comes from being made in the image of God. Also, according to Christian critics, Existentialists are unable to account for the moral dimension of human life and have no basis for an ethical theory if they deny that humans are bound by the commands of God. Many critics argue Sartre's philosophy is contradictory. Specifically, they argue that Sartre makes metaphysical arguments despite his claiming that his philosophical views ignore metaphysics. Importance of Existentialism In forming the classical existential viewpoint, the concept of nothing and thus nihilism are amongst the key fundamentals of existentialism. When we abandon illusions, life is revealed as nothing and for the existentialists, nothing is the source of not only absolute freedom but existential anguish. For an individual, it helps to answer the most important for question for survival, which is, 
What does it mean to be existing as a human being? The imperative to be an individual takes on great importance as a way of orienting human life in a world described by many such considerations. It also helps to bring forth the importance of choice by suggesting that one cannot appeal to systems of law or convention or tradition as decisively furnishing instructions for life choices. Every choice has to be personally appropriated. It must be pointed out that the existentialists' writings have helped us to foresee the importance of personal relations by creating meaning if analyzed carefully. Actually means creating and discovering relations between people. Religious existentialists see the God-human relation as the ground of all relations between human beings. Even though the concrete individual existence must have priority in existentialism, certain conditions are commonly held to be endemic to human existence. What these conditions are is better understood in light of the meaning of the world existence, which comes from the Latin existere, meaning to stand out. Summary Existentialism is a philosophical theory which holds that a further set of categories governed by the norm of authenticity that is necessary to grasp human existence. Its basic features are existence, anxiety and authenticity, freedom, situatedness, irrationality, crowd and philosophy as a way of life. Amongst many key existential philosophers who have shaped the structure of this theory are Kierkegaard, Nietzsche, Heidegger, Sartre, Beauvoir and Camus. Two main models of existentialism that are in limelight, first humanistic existential model and second the seventh seal cinematic model of existentialism suggest to solve and answer out the queries one has related to his existence and activities. Applications of existential theory can be found in many areas of life apart from philosophy such as literature and film and television. Many criticisms and contradictions to this theory have been presented through different lenses of life. In today's world, full of challenges and stresses, existential theory emerges as a powerful psychological force which has the capacity to promote happiness and well-being.